it's not a race. Gotta remember, not a race. Not, not saying I'm competitive or anything, but I really want to win this. Welcome to the second episode of Kickstart Buy, Ride, and Sell. And yes, less than 36 hours ago, I bought this 1967 BSA Thunderbolt. And today, well, today we're gonna ride because I have this. That's the title to the motorcycle. And in Colorado, you have 36 hours to ride the motorcycle, basically get it home before you have to title it or get temporary tags. So today, I thought it'd be fun to do something interesting. I thought it'd be fun to compare two 1960s vehicles and do a little bit of a time capsule video. And that is coming up right now on the Fast Lane Car. Luckily, we have this 1968 Bronco and, of course, the 67 BSA Thunderbolt. So I thought it'd be fun to do a little time capsule video, see what it's like to live in the 60s. But I need someone's help. Tommy, come on over here. This is my son, Tommy. Hello. Tommy, are you up for a little bit of an adventure? Yeah, yeah, All right. excited. All right, over there is the Switzerland Trail, and that goes to a little gold mining town called Gold Hill. And I thought it'd be a lot of fun if you drove the Bronco to Gold Hill and I rode the motorcycle. But there's a catch. That's the street bike, and this, of course, is an off-road vehicle, so I Google mapped it. If you go by Switzerland Trail, 45 minutes to get to Gold Hill. 45? Yep, and if I take the motorcycle on the road, 46 minutes to get to Gold Hill. Okay. All right, so let's relive the 60s. I'll be on the bike, you're in the Bronco, and let's just go for a little bit of a drive and a ride. Yes, this bike doesn't have a fuel gauge. That looks good. Hey, Tommy, how do you want to start this? Uh, hello. Ready, set, go. Alright, it's not a race. It's not a race, Tommy. Alright, I'll meet you in Gold Hill. <laughs> yeah, I remember when I was like that. I think I'm going to not push this, uh, 40, what is that? Almost 50 year old bike. I'm just going to try to get the gold hill in one piece. Even though I was really not around in the 1960s, this little Bronco really gives you a sense of what the 1960s were like, at least from a small truck perspective. So I have no power steering, no power brakes, but I do have a very large, very powerful 289 cubic inch V8 under the hood. Um, paired with the three in the tree and the managed transmission, it is a very fun drive by today's standards. If not a little bit, a little bit dangerous, a little bit scary. Now the early Broncos, 1966 through 1977, had coil spring front suspensions. And what that means, at least in this situation, is when you hit a bump, unlike some of the CJ5s in this time period, you don't get flung around. It's a smooth ride, it's stable, it's controlled, it's just a really pleasant place to be. Unlike a modern bike, and if I'm being honest, this BSA is slow, it's heavy, and it is buzzy. At 55 miles an hour, it rides like a dream. At 65 miles an hour, it'll rattle your teeth out. But you know what? This is a 50-year-old bike, well, almost 50 years old, and we really shouldn't be comparing it to a modern bike. Not a race. Gotta remember, not a race. Not not saying I'm competitive or anything, but I really want to win this. Really want to win this for America. Do it for America, Bronco. All right, now that we've got the modern bike comparison out of the way, let's talk about what makes this such a joy to ride. First and foremost, the exhaust note. It is phenomenal. It sounds like, well, it sounds like God laughing. And you gotta love the look of the bike. The 60s must have been one heck of a hot era because this Bronco is starting to get a little bit toasty. These slower speeds on these more technical off-road sections mean that the Bronco really 
I don't want to say overheats, but you know, we're approaching 200 degrees Fahrenheit pretty quickly here, so hopefully we don't go any hotter than that. Just listen to that parallel 650 as it goes down the road. How can you not help but smile? Look at all that chrome. Okay, when you hit the brakes, keep in mind I only have drum brakes. So yeah, that's a little bit dicey. But we're not racing. That's right, I am not racing. I know Tommy thinks we're racing. Okay, I am racing because let's face it, it's a minute apart and one of us is going to get there first and I want to prove that a motorcycle, even a 50 year old motorcycle, is more nimble, more fun, and certainly a better way to go around a corner on a beautiful Colorado fall day. Almost forgot the shifter is on the wrong side. In an emergency situation, I always manage to hit first gear instead of the brake. Nothing. I was enjoying the ride. <laughs> I was enjoying the ride, dude. I knew you would get here first. What a splendid day to relive the 60s, huh? Yeah, really wonderful. I gotta tell you, that is a beautiful bike. The Brits knew how to build bikes. Yeah, they sure did. This is great. Just look at it. Look, look at that. Look how uh, those lines just scream British bike, right? That is a classic old school British bike. Now, I know BSA stands for Birmingham Small Arms, right? Yep. And I know at one point uh, they actually were part of Triumph, is that right? No, they, they own Triumph. So BSA in the early to mid 50s, they were actually the uh, largest manufacturer of motorcycles in the world. Yeah, but a lot of people don't like the BSAs. They like... Uh... Well, they don't like the later BSAs. Yeah. All right, well, since we're here, since the store is open, let's go get a Coke. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. What a beautiful day, Tommy. So what was the Bronco like? What was it coming up here in the Bronco? Yeah, it was great. I mean, it was just the just the hoot going through that little trail. It yeah. really, really does well. Did yeah. you feel like you were in the 60s? Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> well, I gotta tell you, if I'm being honest, the motorcycle is, well, it's interesting. The brakes are squishy, it bogs, Yep. it's heavy, it vibrates, but it is so much fun to ride. I mean, I've owned a lot of bikes, and that one by far has the most character. Mm -hmm. I'm falling in love with it, and that is not a good thing because this is kickstart, buy, ride, and sell. So I'm going to announce it right now with a heavy heart. The BSA Thunderbolt is for sale. And don't you guys dare offer me any less than I paid for because I'm not taking a penny less. But are we going to sell the Bronco? Nope. <laughs> All right, the Bronco's not for sale, just the bike is. As always, this is Roman. And Tommy. Saying thanks for watching. Remember, the next episode is when we sell the bike. Tom, you're about as close to a BSA expert as we're going to find, right? Because tell me the first time you rode one. I went 10,000 miles that summer riding all around Europe, all into Africa, back up into uh, Europe, and just had a, a great time. BSA twins and the Triumphs, yep. both pistons are going up and down at the same time. Yep. And there is no uh, way to balance out um, a motor that has both pistons going up and down at the same time without a balance shaft, which yeah. some of the newer bikes have balance shafts. Yeah. They balanced them to a factor of around 60%, which meant that 60% of the off balance was balanced out of them, but you were still 40% out of balance. Yeah. And there was no way to get it perfectly smooth. And what they did was they found a sweet spot uh, which was probably around 55 mile an hour, 60 mile an hour. They tried to, they tried to tune the vibrations out at that speed.